thing is absolutely astounding. Each year we do this, it, it fascinates me, uh, the, the level of um, competence and creativity that, that comes through. that came up a lot with the people that we liked was we would all say, oh, I could see this game. I could absolutely picture this. I knew exactly how I would play it. With the, the level of quality and production value, just a staggering amount of talent on display. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts, Alicia Judge and Aoife Wilson. to the 2019 BAFTA Young Game Designers Awards. It's a genuine honour to be in the room with so many talented game designers. By being here today, you've already begun your journey in this industry, so congratulations to you all. It's almost time for the first award now, and no doubt some of you are wondering how we decide the winners. BAFTA has a panel of industry professionals ranging from game designers and producers to streamers and previous winners. And the BAFTA cameras were allowed access to the jury room itself. So let's take a quick look at what goes on behind closed doors. Just come from the Young Game Designer concept final jury. Um, we've just had a really great discussion on both in both categories. Some of the key things we look for are like real expression of the gameplay ideas because we need to know what we're, what we're doing and why that would be fun for us to do. We're looking for a game that might actually be marketable and something that you could take out and play and buy. It was a bit of an emotional journey really. A lot of the pictures were very very good at um, raising some emotions in the room. There were a couple of recurring themes as well, weren't there? Yeah. There, was, um, there was quite a few that touched on climate change. There were um, a couple that touched on identity yeah, and, and LGBT representation. Mm. Really, what we're working with is the future talent in the industry that's going to be coming through. Historically, young game designers, you know, winners of the award, have gone on to be really successful in the industry. I want to play at night. Yeah. <laughs> Now is the time to meet our first guests. It's Jane Douglas and Dean Dodds. I, an imaginative concept like the ones you submitted can help elevate a game beyond its peers to create something truly original. The finalists today showed an aptitude for design and creativity which impressed our panel. And the winner is... Can't wait for this. I seek death. How are you feeling? I don't know. <laughs> can, can we have like a, a shake test? Oh. <laughs> so what was what was the best thing and the hardest thing about the, the creation process? The character Frankie was like my favourite part, just creating her and how she thinks and her motives and everything. Honestly, let's give a massive round of applause. A lot of my generation got into gaming because of Minecraft and I'm one of those people. I just sort of had this sort of fantasy where I'd be like one of the people that would make updates for it when I'm older. I was sort of in the middle of an emo phase, so I sort of put like a lot of skulls and like phrases into my work in computing and then one of the phrases was I seek death and I thought that would be like a fun thing to sort of build a game around. When I went up I had to ask the people like am I meant to say a speech what do I do and I just it was terrifying but amazing. And the winner is oh gosh all right exciting uh, creatively bankrupt. Where did the idea for the game come from? Where did you start? <sighs> Three days before the deadline. I'm not joking. My friend sent me the yes. ad on Instagram. And she said, oh, just, she said, this looks cool. And I had the game idea. I was like, I should go for it because it will go by. If not, get to making it. Make yes. it please. Go on, off you go, off, off you go. go. Round of applause. I've been interested in games at a young age. My mum was sort of into games, my brother was into games. And then when I developed my own interest in the arts and I was thinking what I could what could I do with the arts, I thought back to video games and kinda of explored from there. 
I was listening to a podcast where they were playing a, a tabletop game about heists and I just saw that concept and thought how could you make this fun, how can you make it a good experience with friends because I love playing games with my like friends like doing collaborative stuff. Our next award recognises those individuals with a passion and dedication for game making that has inspired others. Absolutely. To present the Mentor Award, please welcome to the stage a man with over 30 years of experience in the game sector, David Gardner. Well, hello there, everybody. This award recognises inspirational people involved in the education of young game creators here in the United Kingdom. And the YGD Mentor Award goes to... Matthew Applegate. I, I love doing what I do, um, and I'm sure the other mentors uh, here tonight do as well. And it's, this is such a great opportunity for parents and schools to see just how important the games industry is. Thank you very much. Keep making games, keep building worlds, keep telling those stories. Thank you. Very luckily, I, I get to travel around about nine, ten different schools across Suffolk. So I get to work with about 300 kids a week building video games, but also using video games to get them to do more art space things. So we use Minecraft to teach Romeo and Juliet. We get, get them to design different you know, props for plays and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, I love what I do. To be recognised with this award, it, it feels incredible. It gives me a lot more power to do that. And, talk to parents with a bit more confidence, talk to schools, talk to local council, to get them behind what we do. Our final two awards this afternoon recognise those young people who've taken the leap completely and begun creating their own games. Before we find out the results, let's hear from the judges of this year's Game Making Awards. I think my favourite thing about YGD and all the entries is that they're just like, are really pure, like they're just kids making games because they really want to. We've played through 20 amazing games and we've kind of been discussing among ourselves about which of those games kind of really excel creatively, technically, all these different sort of ways. The applications that have come through are just quite frankly astounding um, and people definitely coming off to my job. Yeah. yeah. Please welcome to the stage Des Gale and Siobhan Reddy. <laughs> All our finalists produced exceptional games that dazzled our panel. And the winners today will have the opportunity to work with experts to develop their ideas even further. And the award goes to... <laughs> Laser Ease, a demolition of the future. that all to program and, and physically make? It was uh, quite hard. Yes! <laughs> I can imagine. Well, have you got any more ideas up your sleeve? Are you, gonna, are you making any new ones right now? Um, I'm thinking of a few ideas. Oh, okay. it's mysterious. I like it. <laughs> it's been very exciting. Also, I was quite a bit nervous. But overall, it was good. The game engine I use has samples. And there was this uh, small one where it just had um, a laser that shot, stopped, and bounced off a mirror, and that's all. And then I thought of what I could do with that, sort of developed off of that. And the winner is? The winner is Whip by Adam Pace. Your game looks amazing, Ad. Like, honestly, well, you. your art is just, who taught you to create art like that? I did art like that because I couldn't draw. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> it feels weird. Uh, I still can't really believe it to hold it. It's heavier than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. It was an idea that I had of like an AI that like has sort of like been left on for X amount of time. And it just sort of like kept building up and then trying to make them as like likeable as possible. Uh, I think I'm helped it a bit that he couldn't do much you know he was, he was a little bit defenseless so that made you sort of like resonate with him a bit more please welcome to the stage mr mike bithel 
I've been a judge at the BAFTA Young Game Designers Awards for quite some time, and it's genuinely a highlight of my year. Every time I see a broad range of ridiculous games made by incredibly creative, talented people like yourselves, you're in this room because your work stood out, and that makes you winners. But to be honest, you were winners the second you sent in your application. This is a real job. You're allowed to do this. And even if you weren't, you've already shown the desire to do it. So who the hell's gonna stop you? We want games. And more importantly, we want you making them. So good luck, thanks for being a part of this, and for adding your ideas and a voice to our industry. Cheers. <laughs> to all of us for being here today to allow us to celebrate your incredible achievements. But before we go, please put your hands together one more time for all the finalists whose work we've enjoyed today. Yes. It's really exciting and when they say you've been nominated, it's you feel very good. It's not something you'd want to see and then think, I'm not good enough to do that and then miss the potential of being able to win. You get to make new friends, you get to talk to um, people people in the industry that you never thought you would think would come and they appear and it's just a very good insight into the industry and what you could aim towards. BAFTA is like, is like a door opener and anyone can instantly recognise that name and think, well, that, that, that's a person with talent. <laughs>